Have you ever wondered, how can I get my bilk grinder to track perfectly in reverse as well as forward? You know, because a lot of people, you'll get a tracking grate in forward and then you flip the switch and it rides over about an inch and then you adjust it and it comes back, which is fine. That's totally, that's totally fine. But what if your bilk grinder could do this? I'm going to show you how to make your belt grinder track just as good in reverse as it does in forward. So, stick around. The most important thing to having a belt grinder that tracks well is to make sure that all of your wheels are on the same plane. That's first and foremost. Wheels on the same plane or you have to have flat wheels, one or the other. If you have crowned wheels, wheels that have a raised center, they are all going to want to pull the belt to their center. So it's important if you have crowned wheels, they have to be on the same plane, otherwise you're gonna have problems because this wheel and this wheel will fight each other. When you're going forward, this wheel is what sets the tracking of the belt um, because it's directly before your platen. When you're going in reverse, this wheel is right before your platen and it determines um, where the belt's going to track. So, this is your reverse tracking, that's your forward tracking. So, the key here is you have to adjust this wheel. Now, if this wheel right here has a high spot on the outside, meaning it is tilted this way or tilted down, that is going to cause the wheel, the belt, to move out. If you hit reverse and your belt goes in, then that means your wheel is tilted up and back or anywhere in between there, okay? Because the wheel always wants to go to the highest point. So when you're going in reverse, like this, um, yeah, and the inside of your wheel is the highest point, that's gonna pull the belt in. If the outside, you know, this portion is um, sticking out or down, it's gonna pull it that way. So it's what I did, and it's what you can do, is you have to taper the wheel while it's running. Now, this is very dangerous, okay? I wanna say that very loud, very clear, this is dangerous. Do not injure yourself. If you don't believe that you can do this safely, please do not try. So, let me show you what I did. This is a boring tool for a lathe and has a carbide tool on there. So, so what I did, I turned on the belt grinder and I held it just like this and I drug it across back and forth by hand. Just held it there, back and forth. And so what I did, I very, very slowly started to whittle down this half of the wheel. So instead of it pulling the belt this direction when it's in reverse, it slowly, the belt started to slowly track back towards the middle. Now, you don't do it all at once. So now you stop, you flip it, and you change directions to make the belt go the other way, and you get it to track that direction, then you flip it, and you adjust it a little bit more. And then you flip direction. So you keep going forwards and backwards until eventually, every the more you take off the outside, the more the belt's going to track um, towards the inside when it's going in reverse. So, and now here's the thing: you guys probably don't all have one of these. You could use a drill bit. Let me show you that. Honestly, a large one like this is probably going to be easier to hang on to and you can rest yourself, rest your hand there and you can use that sharp spot and like that. Let me flip this thing on, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so now it's turning kind of slow.
You see that? Did you see some shavings coming off? It's that easy. You just grab yourself a drill bit. Now, if you need to do the inside or the outside, you can do that. Now, I could do the inside a little bit. See how it grabbed? Very dangerous, very dangerous. Anyway, so you can do it with sandpaper, you do it with this. Do not let this get caught in there, rip it out of your hand, and send you to the ER. It's very, very dangerous. I cannot repeat that enough. This is dangerous. But, but, because I can uh, have it going that direction, and then flip direction. That easily. Now, because that strategy is so dangerous, I want to throw out some other options that are a little bit less dangerous. I hope you've stuck around and watched the video until this point because there are other options that you have. One other option you have is you could take the wheel off, put it, um, put a big bolt through it, and uh, washers, big fender washers on both sides, tighten it so that way the bolt holds it. And make sure the bolt is about the same diameter as the bearings because if you have run out, this is going to ruin your wheel. And you could put it in a drill press and take sandpaper and take a couple, you know, maybe a half a degree off, put it back on and try it. Do it over, try it. Do it over, try it. And you could have a lot of time. The only reason I did it the other way is because it's really, really fast, but it's really, really dangerous. I don't want anybody to get hurt. I am not going to take responsibility for anybody who gets hurt because I have clearly, clearly stated very many times that this is dangerous. So you can leave me a comment section if you're a safety Nazi like myself in the, <laughs> in the comment section below and, and let me know once again that this is a bad idea. But the best thing to do, the best thing to do is just from the get-go build a belt grinder with every single wheel 100% parallel to each other but let's be honest that's pretty impossible even if you're close you're never going to be 100 percent. you might be 99.99 percent which is not 100 you'll never get to 100 um, but you'll be very close and and some of us have much greater variations of close i mean some of us are you know three degrees off per wheel so we buy crowned wheels to compensate which is okay um that's that's part of that's part of this trait that's part of this group you know the those of us who build stuff by hand sometimes you got to compensate sometimes your design has to trump you know some of those um built-in problems that you just have when you want one belt to track on a whole bunch of different wheels anyways thanks for watching and also if any of you are interested in building your very own 2x72 metal shredding behemoth um, I have a full set of metric and imperial, draw imperial drawings available on BexArmory.com. There will be a link to those plans in the description of this video below. And one of the greatest things about this belt grinder is no welding. So if you don't have a welder, that's fine. You don't need one. Also, all of these parts and pieces are made and sized out of stock sized bar stock so you don't have to get this water jet laser cut plasma cut this is a standard size of bar this is a standard size bar this is a standard size tube this is a standard size bar this is a standard size bar everything is standard sized bars all you're doing cutting them to length and putting some holes in it Super, super simple. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you guys had an absolutely great day, and um, we'll see you next time.